Jackie, what the fuck is going on? Get therapy. Why the fuck are you on the show? Why are you on this show looking for love when you should be at the hospital with your daddy? I really want you to understand what you have in a man like Marshall during Black Women's Jesus Rolls on the third day so still we rise month. go ahead we're not gonna waste a lot of time we're gonna go ahead and jump into right into this love is blind bullshit because let me tell you something it's a lot of bullshit going on in these three episodes now is it me or these three episodes were kind of like boring like they weren't as entertaining but it was like a lot of shit going on like it wasn't a lot of like ooh ah ooh ah but it was like you know what, now that I think about it, maybe it was entertaining. I don't know, maybe I just watched it too late at night and it just, I felt like it wasn't. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. So for this video, I'm going to do episodes 6 and 7, and then I'm going to come back and do episode 8, okay? Because I, I really think episode 8 needs its very own video. And if you've seen the episode, you know why. It needs its own video. So let's go ahead and just jump into episode 6. So... We're seeing all the couples, they're leaving Mexico, you know, everybody's together, everybody's happy, everybody's jolly, all the couples are coupled up, it's amazing. Then we see Irene, and you know, she's leaving by herself. What I thought was so funny from Irene, first of all, before I get into her, I saw a lot of the comments, you guys were saying that I went in on her just a little too hard, and you know what, like as I was reading the comments, I thought to myself... I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I do not give a fuck. I do not care. <laughs> okay? Because let me tell you something. Somebody who has the gall to be that mean, like somebody who has the gall to be able to look at themselves in the mirror and see what they look like and then go on a national television show and be that mean and have no self-awareness while they look like fucking Shrek. Actually, you know what Irene looks like? She looked like Beans from Even Stevens. Like, please tell me I'm not kidding. Like, please tell me I'm right. She looks just like Beans from Even Stevens. Like, she's facially challenged. And I'm sorry. Again, I stand on it. For you to be that mean while being facially challenged, that shit takes a lot of audacity. And let me tell you, even as you're watching this episode, when she's in the villa and she about to, she's about to leave, I'm leaving without Zach and everything. But, you know, I mean, if my feelings change and, you know, I feel like I want to get him back, I'll do what I have to do to get him back. You know, if weeks from now I feel like... And it's like, girl! Like, the girl literally has no self-awareness. Like, again... I'm really used to ugly people having beautiful personalities. Like, what the fuck happened here? It's like God really, like, this is like one of the few times where God made a mistake. Like, God usually will make, okay, you know what? I'm going to make you ugly, but I'm going to give you personality. I'm going to make you ugly, but I'm going to give you a nice body. I'm going to make you ugly, but I'm going to give you clear skin. Like, you know what I mean? Like, God usually, like, will give you something to compensate for what he didn't give you. And right here, like, he didn't give your ass nothing. Like, not even self-aware, not, like, not even simple self-awareness. Like, that lets me know that, bitch, you were Satan made. Like, this is, ain't no way God made this. Like, we have to be, we have to have honest conversations about, th there's no way that God was responsible for the makings of you. At all. Okay? So, I don't give a fuck that y'all don't like it. I'm still gonna let you know this bitch is ugly inside and out. Um, and we're gonna talk about her again and her ugliness later on in the episode. I love that Netflix did not make us wait and they took us back to the dinner date with, uh... I don't know, maybe it was lunch. It was a lunch date between Bliss and Zach. This is the first time that they're meeting. I, I, I love when Netflix doesn't make me wait. Don't make me wait. Get to the motherfucking tea. Get to the motherfucking tea. Y'all know what I can't... Y'all know why we here. Get to the motherfucking tea. Get to the motherfucking tea, bitch. I want the tea, okay? So I'm glad that they went in and they let us see more of this date between Bliss and Zach. You know, um, Zach tells Bliss that the trip was horrible. He says, um, um, he tells Bliss, listen, like, you were the girl that I was looking for from the pods. Like, I know that you were the girl I was looking for. And Bliss's response to that is like, it's annoying to hear that. It's really annoying to hear that because, again, like, you knew we had this connection in the pods and you didn't pick me. 
And now here you are after shit went a bust for you. Now here you are telling me that I was the girl that you really wanted. Like after you done proposed to Princess Fiona, you know, and mind you y'all, y'all gotta really see this from Bliss's point of view. Number one, I don't care how often, you know, and we're going to talk more about this later on, but I don't care how often someone in this predicament tries to make you feel like you're not, you're not number two. You were number two. Bliss was number two. And she had to be number two to a bitch that she knew had nothing on her. Like, put yourself in Bliss's shoes from the pods. Like, having seen Irene, having seen Irene's behavior, having to look at Irene's ugly ass face, having to be around her dark ass spirit, then knowing that the man that you made this beautiful connection with also made a beautiful connection with her to the point where he chooses her over you, the woman that was baking him cupcakes for his birthday and this bitch didn't even fucking remember that he had a fucking birthday. This man stood up in the pods and sang his heart out to this bitch that looks like a fucking mammoth. Like, you have to deal with that. You have to make peace with that. Knowing that this man put his entire booty hole into a song for the world to see while he proposed to this bitch. Like, you have to make peace with that. And you have to make peace with the fact that he only chose you after things didn't work out with her. We're going to be a hundred. We're going to keep it a hundred. We're going to keep it a hundred. Now, despite all that, there's no denying that her and Zach have a lot of chemistry. There's no denying like while they sat there at lunch, they had the same awkwardness. They have the same strange jokes. You know, he said something to her about like his eye contact. He was like, you know, does it bother you when I look at you in the eye? She's like, no, why? Am I looking away? He's like, no. You know, that was one thing that Princess Fiona told me that she didn't like, that she found weird about me. Now, did y'all notice how he, he never told Bliss? He never told Bliss that Beans from Even Stevens told him he looked like a car cartoon character. Did he tell Bliss that? Maybe I don't remember. Let me check my notes. Because I do not recall Zach telling her that this bitch called him a cartoon character. Because I feel like if he did tell her that, she would have been like, oh no, I know good and damn well her ugly ass did not say that shit to you. Like, you know? Um, but... Again, like there's no denying that they have all this chemistry. You know, the fact that they have so many similarities, they're both extremely educated. Even the whole, I hope you dance, I hope you dance. The fact that that's a song that her mom loves for her and that that's a song that his mom dedicated to him when he was a child. Like there's no denying that they have chemistry and they have a lot of similarities. And there's just, like, you see this friction between them. Now, y'all might not like me for this, but I'm rooting for Zach. I'm rooting for, are you rooting for Zach? I'm rooting for Zach. I'm rooting for Zach. Zach fucked up, but I really feel like as I'm watching this, I'm rooting for him to be able to get a second chance. Bliss and Zach are so cute together. I just, I honestly like, I love it. I love it. So, ba -da -ba -ba -ba, I'm rooting for them. I'm rooting for them. I am rooting for their ass. Um, all right, let's go to Kwame and Chelsea. So Kwame and Chelsea they um go into their apartments you know this is a time in the season where the couple start getting to their apartments together Kwame and Chelsea get into their apartment first of all I love Chelsea is it me or Chelsea's the fan favorite like I you know I love Tiffany too but I just feel like Chelsea she just radiates good energy like my sis my white sister she is she just radiates goodness I feel like she's a good person that's what come across, that's what comes across, you know, as I'm watching it. So anyway, they're in their apartment. One thing about Chelsea, she gonna ask the questions that need to be asked. She talked about, you know, cleanliness. She asked Kwame, hey, you know, do you know how to use a vacuum? Do you, how do you clean? You know, like, do you um, leave dishes in the sink or do you put them in a dishwasher? And of course, Kwame told her he leaves his dishes in the sink. Of course. Kwame salop. Kwame Salop. We say that in, hey, in Creole, Salop. That means somebody who's disgusting, somebody who's who's disgustingly um, dirty at home, somebody who doesn't know how to manage, you know, their house, somebody who has dirty drawers, Salop. 
Kwame gives me salop. He really does give me that. But she was like, oh my God, like, I don't like going, uh, she said, I don't like going to sleep with dirty dishes. Like, and he's like, I mean, it's just dishes. It's just like leaving them, leaving them there for a night or two. She's like, no, 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 no. I don't like going to sleep with dirty dishes. Like, not the white woman being cleaner than you, Kwame. Not the white woman being cleaner than you. And as she's talking, I'm just like, okay, what's next, bitch? So, so not, so I love you already. I love your personality. Now I'm learning that you a clean ass bitch. What's next? Do you use seasoning? Let me find out Chelsea uses seasoning. Like if, it, does my sister use seasoning? What the fuck? I love this bitch. So now we go to Micah and Paul. You know, I don't really care for them like that, but it looks like things are going well with them. And she, Micah brings up the fact that she had this conversation with Irene about Paul. She tells Paul that, you know, she knows that Irene is attracted to him. She's like, you know, is there something that I'm missing? Because in the pods, I don't feel that y'all had that much going on. But, you know, now she's saying she's attracted to you. And she's like, is there something that I'm missing? Did you guys have a connection that I'm not aware of? And Paul tells her, well, you know what? Like at the meetup, she was like touching up on my legs at the pool. And they show clips of that. Now, is it me or Paul was really downplaying the whole Irene situation? Because if my memory serves me, that same day, like at the pool situation, when, when, when it went around that same day, that night, they were still around the pool and Irene was like flirting with him heavy. Like to the point where like she was putting her, her hand in his mouth and she was telling him like how attracted to him she is and how, how good looking he is and how he looks better than Zach and like, Paul was feeling it and Paul was like, well, you know, on a, on a scale, like, what would you like rate my attractiveness? Why didn't he bring all that shit up to Micah? Like, I feel like he really downplayed that. Now, the only thing I can think of is maybe he was downplaying that because to him, he was just enjoying the attention. Paul doesn't really give me somebody who's out here really entertaining a lot of women. And I really think the situation for Paul was the most attention he's had from women in a long time. So maybe he was just basking in the glory of that. But at the same time, I really feel a way about him not being forthright and telling Micah, this is what your, 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 AKA your best friend in the pods, this is what she was doing. She had a fucking finger in my mouth. Why would you not disclose that? That makes me side eye you. So now we get over to Jackie and Marshall. Marshall tells Jackie he told his family that he's engaged. His family's very excited to meet her. They cannot wait. Jackie, on the other hand, is... Uh, I haven't told them. It's not going to be good for them. I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, I hope they want to meet you. Like, Jackie, what the fuck is going on? Get therapy. Jackie, why the fuck are you on the show? Like, I need to know what the fuck is going on with your family life. This can't just be that your daddy's sick. You know, there's this, there's this viral post from her saying that uh, while she was on the show, she was dealing with a lot. Her dad was sick. Okay, bitch, so why the fuck, you, why, why, why did you come on the show? Like, it's like, I don't want to seem like I, I'm not giving empathy to someone like that. Like, I empathize with anybody who's, who's, whose parents are sick or whatever. But then if your parent is that sick, why the fuck are you on this show looking for love when you should be looking for a medic for your daddy? Why are you on this show looking for love when you should be at the hospital with your daddy? Like, get your priorities together. Why the fuck are you here? Why the fuck are you here? It's giving me that she's she's using this family thing as a crutch because she don't want to be with Marshall. That's what it's giving me. Anyway, let's move on. We get to Tiffany and Brett. Tiffany and Brett, I'm sorry. This is just so refreshing to me. It's just so wholesome. It just feels good watching them. You know what I love about Tiffany and Brett? Tiffany is experiencing what I would like to call soft love. I really feel like this is what a lot of black women, what all black women deserve. Soft love. Like, she's not getting no drama out of this man. It's not no trauma that is going to transfer into what they have going on. Yes, they've both, been, they've both been through stuff, but this is a man she can talk through things with. This is a man who's emotionally intelligent, emotionally available. This is a man who is enjoying her company. Like, I just love this. Like, don't y'all love this? I, I, just, okay. I see what you have done for my sister. 
Jesus, I see what you have done for my sister. Oh Lord, I see what you have done for my sister. Please, I beg, I beg, I beg. Don't pray, mon Dieu, don't pray, mon Dieu, don't pray, mon Dieu. Pas oublier, papa, mon Dieu. Quand vous occupez les autres, pas passer vers moi, alléluia. I see what you have done. Do it for me too, please. I need a moment. Now, I love that they're in the bathroom and Tiffany was like, listen, one of my pet peeves is um, somebody getting out the shower and still being wet. And she brought that up to Brett and Brett was like, what? It's like, yeah, like you're supposed to dry yourself in the shower. Y'all, that's a pet peeve for me. Is that not a pet peeve for y'all? I don't understand people who get in the shower and when they're done showering, don't dry themselves off while they're still in the shower. That's what the shower or the tub, that's what it's there for. It's there for you to shower and whatever water you have is there to consume that. The floor is not there for you to make it wet. Now, of course, listen, some water is gonna transfer. I have literally gotten into arguments with men I've dated about this. Like, please do not come out of that shower without drying yourself fully. Please, for the love of God. Like, is it me or like men are famous for doing this? When I've had my mom stay with me or other female family members or female friends, they never do that. But men are, like, they will literally come out the shower soaking wet like a wet dog. And then, like, it's a puddle. Like, it's a puddle around the shower. Why? I'm sorry. That shit just really, <laughs> that shit fucking annoys me. And watching that, like, triggered me. I'm so sorry. Like, I, I is that, am I the only one who's, who has a pet peeve about that? That is a huge pet peeve for me. Huge pet peeve. Let me know some of your other pet peeves that you have. Another one that, that I have is, yo... If there's no more toothpaste, throw it away. Throw it away. Don't cut the toothpaste in half. Try to squeeze. Throw it a fucking way. Throw it away and replace the damn toothpaste. Don't nobody got time to be cutting through the toothpaste, squeezing through, like, you know, making the toothpaste come for me. I'm over here trying to catch toothpaste. No, 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 no. Please. Let me know what some of y'all's pet peeves are when it comes to like living with your significant other. Okay, so Chelsea and Kwame visit Chelsea's apartment. I love Chelsea. Like, I love Chelsea. Clap if you love Chelsea. We're clapping. We're clapping. I love Chelsea. I love Chelsea. Uh, so this might not be a known fact, but my favorite color is pink. I don't wear it a lot, but that is my favorite color. And so walking into her apartment and seeing all that pink, I loved it. Um, you know, Kwame was like, what's up with all this pink? What's up with all this pink? And I love that she brought up the fact that she was in a relationship where, you know, her ex did not allow her to de decorate. He didn't like the way she decorated. He was very controlling about, you know, how their place looked. And so now that she lived alone, she was free to decorate the way she wants, you know? But at the same time, Chelsea comes across as someone who's very, very open. Like it doesn't have it doesn't have to be that way with Kwame, but she is gonna want a little, you know, a little hint of pink. She's gonna want a pink toaster. Okay? She might want a pink fridge. You know what I'm saying? Pink water bottles. Okay? And like Kwame said, even the wine is pink. Yes, Chelsea. My pussy pink, my booty hole brown, yes! Well, actually, she white, so her booty hole would be pink, too. White people got pink booty holes, right? Chelsea would have a pink booty hole. But Kwame, because he black, he would have a brown one, and because she ate his ass in Mexico, she would know that shit. All right, y'all, so moving right along, Tiffany and Brett meet Tiffany's friends. Y'all, this is how your friends should talk to your significant other about you. I think in all my years of watching television, I've watched Married at First Sight before. I've watched, obviously, Love is Blind before. I've never seen a group of girlfriends speak this way about their friend. Like, they were so intentional about letting Brett know who Tiffany is, what you're getting out of Tiffany. You are winning when you get this girl. This girl makes everything around her better. And her friends told her, listen, 
We know her value. You need to know her value. We are letting her give you her heart. Don't stomp on it because we know where you live. <laughs> we know where you live, okay? Um, the way that they cried about their friend. Now, I love that they told Brett, listen, Tiffany does fall asleep at the drop of a dime. You know what? I never really talked about more about her whole sleeping thing. Some people did say in the comments, listen, we in our 30s. Like, we're going to fall asleep. And it's true. Like, for me, honestly, if I'm not already out, and if you're hitting me at 9 o'clock to go out, I'm not coming. Because by 10 o'clock, if I'm not fully asleep, I'm on the couch. I'm on the couch. And I'm on my way to sleep. I'm on the couch. I'm on my way to sleep. Okay? Um, her friend said, yes, yeah, she falls asleep at the drop of the dime. I remember when I was in college, my friends used to think that I was narcoleptic. I will never forget one time we were at a club and I fell asleep on the speaker at the club. I'm talking about Nuck If You Buck came on and I still didn't hear it. Nuck if you buck came on and I didn't get to knuckin' and bucking and re bitch, I was ready to sleep. Okay? I was ready to sleep. Okay? I wasn't knuckin' and bucking on nothing. Nuckin' on nothing. I will fall asleep at the drop of a dime. And still nowadays I still do it. Like, I'll be somewhere and <sighs> Oh, what's up? And, and one thing about me, I'll wake up suddenly. Like, so I can definitely relate to Tiffany. But, um, again, what did y'all think about her friends meeting Brett? Now, I was out with a friend of mine, and she was saying that something for her is off about Brett. She felt like his answers were too perfect when he met her friends. And I didn't really think that when I saw it. But, I mean, I don't know, y'all. I mean, Brett just gives me very cookie cutter. He just gives me very like this is like this is his personality like he has a very consistent personality you know he's not really much of an up and downer he's kind of consistent even when he's really happy like it's just consistent you know what I mean so I don't know I just feel like his answers were his answers and I don't feel like he was lying or anything I just feel like he's just that's just how he feels. He knows that he has a good one. He loves her. Like when he told his friends, like, I love her. I want to tell you, I love you. She did feel like that was a little performative. Tell me what y'all think. I don't know. Now that she said it, I'm like, hmm, maybe I'll pay attention more. But he, it doesn't give me performative. It just gives me soft. And I think maybe a lot of us, especially black women, we're just not, we're just not used to that. We're not used to that. So we're looking at it like, mm, something must be wrong with this nigga. No. The whole time, ain't nothing wrong with that nigga. He's a good man, Savannah. A good man. Zach and Paul get together. Um, listen. <laughs> Zach asked Paul, what do you see in Micah? And, and Paul's response was, she meets the basic criteria of what I'm looking for. She, what did he say? She meets the basic criteria of a wife or something like that. I just thought that was a very interesting answer. She meets the basic criteria. Wouldn't that be everybody? <laughs> what is basic criteria, Paul? Two legs, two hands, ten fingers? Well, if she had nine fingers, would you not, would she not meet the basic criteria? What is the basic criteria? Like, he didn't really say anything about her that was like, you know, she just makes me so happy. I just can't wait to get up to her in the morning. It was just very like, uh, we cool. Child, I don't know. You know what? They a white couple. I don't really care. So, next. Oh my God, just when I thought we was going to have to see her ugly ass anymore, here she comes. Oh my goodness. Irene is like, you know when you kill a cockroach? Like, you know when you stomp a cockroach to fuck out and then that bitch starts flying? Like, you thought you killed it and that shit says still I rise <laughs> and starts flying? That is Irene. Because why the fuck are you here? During Black Women Still Out Rise Month. Like, why the fuck are you here? I'm so tired of this bitch. So, Micah brings her ass back. You know what Irene, when I was looking at Irene in the scene, you know what she looks like? Y'all remember when Shrek became human and he was still ugly? That's what Irene looks like. Y'all remember when Shrek, like, he became a man, like, he wasn't an ogre no more, and he thought he was so fine, and you was just like, yeah, nah, <laughs> baby, you still, even as a human, you still ugly. That's what Irene looks like. So anyway, here she come with her ugly ass. 
she sits down with Micah, and Micah brings up the fact that, like, yo, I want to address this whole Paul situation. I talked to Paul, and Paul was letting me know that about all the inappropriate behavior. And Irene, you know, and then and and Micah was like dragging her, like, listen, like, I don't appreciate that shit. Like in the pods, nobody fucked with you. Like in the house, nobody fucked with you. Nobody liked you. And I was the only one who would talk to you. I was your only friend. Maybe I was wrong for egging you on and laughing along and shit. Now that I look at it, because like, this is pr pretty fucking weird. Like for you to be this way and for you to, you know, this is my fiance and you're supposed to be my best friend in the house. And this is what you do behind my back. Like what the fuck, what the fuck is up with that shit? And Irene is like, you know, you know, it just makes me feel yucky inside that you feel like I would come for your man. Like, you know, I I, I, I don't want your man. You know what I mean? And, and you don't have to worry about me coming for your man. And Michael was like, I mean, I'm not worried. He's not fucking interested. <laughs> Did y'all catch that drag? She's like, he's not fucking interested. So I'm not worried about anything. But see, even for Irene to say that again, it's like, bitch, have you not like the girl really has no self fucking awareness. Oh, you ain't gotta worry about it, you know, cause I, I don't want him, girl. Ain't nobody worried. Let's let's get this. Let's 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 make this clear. Let's put our glasses on. Let's make the vision clear. Nobody's fucking worried, cause you ugly. Michael was literally calling Irene ugly. I just I hope she knows that. Like that was her moment. That was her bitch. You ugly moment. Like bitch, you ugly. My man not checking for you. Let's get that correct. Okay, now we pan over to Jackie and Marshall. Jackie and Marshall are in their house that they're living in together. They didn't really show us what their separate lives were. We didn't get to go to Jackie's place. We didn't get to go to Marshall's place. I wonder why. But they're in this place living together. Anyway, Jackie's asleep and we see Marshall. He's in the kitchen. I'm talking about Marshall is in the kitchen with a napkin. Hold on. Marshall is in the kitchen like this. Like, you know somebody cooking when they got the, okay? Like, when they got the, you know that motherfucker's cooking. He in there and he just, he frying up some eggs. Like, he frying it up. You know what I mean? Like, then he making his bacon, okay? Then he got the griddle going. He got the griddle going. He grilling up some pancakes, baby. The motherfucker is in there cooking. Then he made fresh confiture, or I think in English it's compote. He made fresh compote with fruit that he went to the market to while Jackie was sleeping. Didn't wake her up, made sure not to wake her up, went and got the fresh ingredients to make it. He put that all over the pancake. He also had the powdered sugar. He came over and did the on her pancakes. When is the last time y'all have had a nigga tell you when the last time I had a nigga can't tell you I can't tell you and I just felt like Jackie's reaction wasn't given Jackie's reaction really wasn't given is it me or Jackie's reaction really wasn't given like girl you better appreciate a nigga who cause bitch I'm pretty sure that's the first time you've had a nigga And bitch, because of your behavior on this show, it's gonna be the last time you have a nigga for your crazy ass. Like, her reaction just was not given to me. But anyway, he's like, you know, what would you like to do? Um, you know, I got the dishes. This motherfucker even said he would clean the di- I'm used to, if somebody cooks for you, that's it. They ain't cleaning the dishes. Like, that's just understood in my household. Bitch, I cooked. I'm not doing the dishes. This is not slavery. I'm Haitian. I don't do slavery. Okay? I'm Haitian. I don't do slavery. If I cook, you gotta clean the dishes, bitch. I'm not fucking doing the dishes and cooking at the same motherfucking damn time. No. My name is not 2 Chains. I will not be doing two at the same damn... No. I'm not doing it. Okay? Um, I just felt like her... <sighs> I mean, I, she was somewhat appreciative, but still, I just thought it just wasn't given. All right, so now we go on to Kwame's place. Kwame is solid. 
immediately upon entry, you see that this, this motherfucker is solid. This is a motherfucker who has dirty drawers on the floor, clothes on the floor, a whole bunch of shit on his couch. He got a little blanket on the couch too because it looks like, from what he said, he never really sleeps in his bed. He just sleeps on his couch. Which, honestly, I can somewhat relate to that. I ain't gonna hold you. Like, half the time, I'm on my couch. I, I, a lot of times, I don't make it to my bed. I, I don't. I have a big old couch, so sometimes I don't make it. So I can, I can somewhat relate to that. But... The way this man's house was so unkept, and I just kept thinking, my God, like, did you not see the last season when they showed Cole's house and he had the floating turds in the toilet that he never flushed before he went to the pods? Like, y'all niggas are nasty. Y'all niggas are disgusting. Like, you do know they're gonna, like, you've seen all these other seasons. You do know they're gonna come to your place and film your place. Y'all do know this. Like, y'all do know this, right? It was just so disgusting. His um, drawers were disorganized. Um, he had a little lotion by the couch, though. We know what that lotion was for. So, he, I mean, he'd give, he give his Zozo a good rub down. One thing about Kwame, he might not do his laundry, but he gonna lotion up his dick. I know that. I know that. He ain't gonna clean his dishes, but he gonna put some lotion on his dick. I know that shit. I know that. Okay? Um, Kwame, very embarrassing. Very, as, as a young black man, very, I'm very disappointed. And aren't you African? What is, 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 is Kwame, uh, uh, what is he, is he from Ghana? Is he from, is he from Benin? Somebody, Cote d'Ivoire, Cameroon, somebody please, Kenya, somebody please let me know where the fuck he's from. Because one thing about black people, it don't matter where we are from in the diaspora, one thing we're not gonna do, we're not gonna embarrass ourselves on TV like that and show the whole world that we fucking nasty. That's one thing, we gonna keep it kept. We Even if the house ain't kept all the time, bitch, I'm gonna kept the house before the cameras come in. That was very, Uba, Uba, what? Are you not on my last? Uba, what? Whoosh. Actually, after Jackie and Marshall, we saw Kwame and Chelsea talking about meeting her dad. Okay, so later on is when she goes to his, his apartment. But they're talking about meeting her dad. She's on edge because, you know, she hasn't really explained to her dad what the show is all about, what the experience is all about. And she's just on edge. And it kind of has Kwame feeling on edge, too. So finally, her dad comes. And her dad was so sweet. Honestly, I, I, what what was the story about her mom? I, I don't remember what the story was about her mom, but her dad came off so sweet, so genuine. They kind of have the same spirit. She tells her dad what Love is Blind is and that, you know, at the end of the, the experiment, Kwame proposed to her. Then Kwame, you know, he proceeded to ask her father for his blessing and he gave it. He was like, yo, I love this. He was like, I love this for you guys. Wow, you know, this I'm not familiar with this experience, but I love this for you guys. And I love that her dad was like, listen, you're getting a hell of a deal with Chelsea. A hell of a deal. And Chelsea thought that shit was hilarious. She was like, what do you mean a hell of a deal? Like, what? What is it? You getting her 70% off? Like, what the fuck? You know, but um, I think his wording might have been a little off, but I, I feel like what her dad was saying is, man, you are getting a lot with my daughter. Like, you are getting a lot with my daughter, and you are lucky. And honestly, as a viewer, we can all see it. I, I really, like, Chelsea's my fave. Chelsea is my fave. Tiffany and Brett are my fave couple, but I think if I had to choose, like, one favorite person, it would be Chelsea. She's just pure. She just comes across very, very pure. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, so now we have Paul's mom. You know, Paul has his mom meet Micah. Everything made sense. Is it me or Micah and his mom were twins? Twins, same personality, like down to the personality, down to the blonde hair, they looked a lot, they they had a lot of similarities and it all made sense. Paul is marrying his mom. I love that his mom told her, listen bitch, <laughs> before I met you, I did my motherfucking Googles. I sure, I sure did find you on Facebook. I sure did find your daddy and your mama on Facebook. I know that your daddy owns a daycare. I know that your mama works down to the, the to at, at, at the bank. I know that I know the I know the, I know when your teeth, your front teeth fell out. You were in third grade. I know all that shit, bitch. I wanted to make sure I know who you are 
before I let my son marry your ass. I, 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 I don't play that shit, okay? I don't play. And her mom, his mom is from New Orleans. She just really gave me like down home, southern, like southern belle. Like she really gave New Orleans. Like she was in a colorful dress. Like she was a pleasure. What did you guys think about pa Paul's mom? I like that Paul's mom was saying Paul is like the baby Jesus of the family. He can't do no wrong. Like, she, like I've never seen him date. This is the first time I'm really seeing him take someone serious. So again, that kind of confirmed what I was saying earlier. I, I really feel like this is the most attention Paul has gotten in a long time um, or probably ever and and vice versa. I don't think that he's out here entertaining a lot of women because he's a fucking scientist. He is an environmental scientist. That nigga got better shit to worry about. That nigga got to worry about if COVID coming back. You know what I'm saying? Like he's testing for, you know what I'm saying? Like he got better shit to do with his time than to be entertaining a whole bunch of bitches. Okay. This nigga is Captain Planet. All right. Okay. All right. Next, we get to Brett and Tiffany. Brett, we get to Brett's place, and um, Brett is in a one bedroom. Uh, he has was he in a one bedroom or a two bedroom? I just know there was one room. You know what? I think he's probably in a two bedroom or a one room that has like a little den because he had the space where he had all these shoes. But he doesn't have a lot of space in the apartment. And um, that was pretty clear to Tiff. And she just said, you know, like, I mean, I can make it work. I can make it work. I don't know why she kept saying, because I, I would have told him straight up, I cannot make this work. <laughs> I, we need a bigger place. But I love that he said, okay, it's cool. If we can't do this, like, I'm, I have no problem moving us into a bigger place in the building. That so he lives in a building that has two bedrooms, three bedrooms. He's like, we could do a three bedroom. It's all good with me. So I love that. Tiffany and Brett, love it, love it, love it. Zach and Bliss are at Zach's apartment. Zach is cooking for her. White people, please jump in the comments. Why was this man cooking steak in water? Somebody got, see, now I'm worried for my sister. Because what the fuck is this shit? This man was cooking steak in water. White people, please jump in the comments. Please let me know what type of barbaric shit this is. Okay, why the fuck was he cooking steak and water? You ain't got no pots, you ain't got no, well, obviously he had pots and pans because he was making carrots and mushrooms. He put goat cheese on the carrots. I was like, mm, you know what, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try that. I don't like the way he did it, but I'm definitely gonna look up a good recipe to try that. He had the mushrooms going, he had shrimp. What is this meal? Like, Zach, I'm rooting for you, but what is it? Shrimp, carrots, mushroom. Okay, I get the steak. Okay, so maybe he's trying to do like a surf and turf, maybe. Okay, the shrimp on top of the steak. But what is this meal? Then they start talking about how they both like goat cheese ice cream. Okay, sis, sister, sister, sister. Bliss, bliss. I was rooting for you. I was rooting for you. But baby, not during Black Women's Still I Rise Month. Jesus did not rise on the third day for us to be eating goat cheese ice cream. That is not the work of the Lord. Okay, I was rooting for you, sis. What the fuck? What in the entire fuck is going on? So, you know, now they talk more about, you know, where they're at and where they're going. And I like how Bliss made it plain to him that, you know, she does have reservations. That, you know, she is his second choice. And here's the thing with Zach. Zach is there to reassure her. I like that Zach is not just only, like, asking her for a second chance, but he's putting effort towards his second chance like he's working for that second chance and i really really like that however i just can't help but to think in the back of my mind that if things didn't if, if things had worked out between zach and princess fiona we wouldn't be here right now i just i can't help but to think that and i'm pretty sure at this point although bliss is enjoying the time that she's enjoying with zach they have so much chemistry they, you could tell, like, honestly, they really are a perfect match. But that still hurts. And I like that she said that. Like, that hurts. That hurts. And the reality of this for me is as I'm watching this, I couldn't help but to think, like, when have I in my life been somebody's second choice? If I have been somebody's second choice, I didn't know it. I didn't know it. Have you ever been somebody's second choice and knew it? That's not really a lot of our realities. Like, you can kind of dissect someone's behavior and then reach that conclusion. 
But in, a, in an experience like this, you literally get to see you were this person's second choice, right? And so how do you make peace with that? And I like that Bliss said, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you a hard time, as you should. Give his ass a hard time. Give his ass a hard time. And it's not about just being spiteful. It's about the fact that, bitch, I put my best foot forward for you. And I didn't get the song in the pods. I didn't get the Irina, I love you, I do. I didn't get that moment. I didn't get that shit. I'm going to have to one day sit back and watch you sing to this Shrek face bitch. The song that was meant for me, the, like uh, the proposal that I should have gotten. I'm going to have to sit and watch you along with the rest of the world doing that shit to another woman. And that's going to bring it back. You know what I'm saying? So I'm rooting for them. But also, if Bliss is not team this, I I'm with her as well. Because at the, at the end of the day, you did play in my sister's face. You played in my sister's face, period. So now we're at the point where Chelsea goes into Kwame's apartment. I already told y'all Kwame is disgusting. He's a salop. Okay, the apartment looks atrocious. Um, but while they're at the apartment, they do have a conversation because Chelsea is in Seattle. Kwame is in Portland, which is like two and a half hours away from Seattle. And so Kwame is feeling like he has to do a lot of compromising and but Chelsea is like I mean the compromises that you're making it does make sense for instance Chelsea has a job that she goes to Kwame works remotely now Kwame is like well I don't have any friends in Seattle all my friends are in Portland you know I get to play soccer with them I get to hang out with them I wouldn't be able to hang out with them as much if I go to Seattle you know what I mean and so what do you guys feel about that I feel like I mean my nigga Welcome to marriage, like Chelsea said, like this is compromise. Welcome to marriage. You have to compromise, you have to do things that sometimes you might not want to do for the betterment of the relationship. I'm not saying do shit that's gonna compromise your morals or you know your heart, your spirit, but relocating, obviously, somebody has to relocate. And if you're working remotely, then you you're gonna have to relocate. So anyway, now we go to Marshall and Jackie. It's time to meet the families. And Jackie is saying that she doesn't want Marshall to meet her. She, 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 she doesn't think that her family is going to want to meet Marshall, that her mom is very upset about her doing this whole experiment. Um, and like, she needs a moment. Like, you know, she gets so emotional and you see Marshall like go up to her and he says, listen, like, what do you need me to do? Like, do you need, what do you need help with? You know, if you want, I can go ahead and take a walk outside and give you some, you know, give you some air. And she's like, oh my God, like you're making it worse. Like, leave me alone. Like, like you're, 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 you're bringing up my anxiety. Like you're asking me how I'm doing. Like that's making it worse. And I'm just, we need a therapist. Like y'all, y'all need why are y'all going on love is blind when y'all need to be going on love is therapy? Like y'all need to be going to love is therapy. Seriously, Jackie, you need a therapist. Something's wrong with you. Like seriously, like there, there's there something is wrong. Something is is really really wrong with you. Like instead of coming on love is blind looking for a husband, Jackie, you need to be online on mytherapist.com looking for a therapist. You really do because the thing is watching you get mad at Marshall when he asked you if he should give you your space but then turning around and seeing you talk to his sister and when his sister and um her husband asked you like what do you see in him you said to them oh I like how he gives me my space like when, when I'm in one of my moods when I don't feel like myself he gives me my space but when he was trying to give you your space earlier you basically cussed him out like, what is it? Like, do you know what you have in this man? You yourself told his sister, man, when we were in the, when we were in the pods, this man was writing poems for me. And, and Marshall said, yeah, I haven't written poems in years, but like she inspired me to write poems for her. This man was writing you poems. It's 2023. Ladies, jump in the comments and let me know when is the last time a man wrote you a poem. Like, seriously. This man was writing you poems. He's thoughtful. He lets you be you. I really want you to understand 
what you have in a man like Marshall during black women's Jesus rose on the third day. So still we rise month. I want you to understand that because a man like Marshall does not come often. He does not come often. And what happens is men like Marshall, they get women like you who seemingly it seems like you want a very toxic kind of love, a very violent kind of love. But there is a very hefty price for violence. Okay. Very hefty price. And so I, I say all that to say, man, Jackie don't want you, Marshall. That lady do not want you. She does not want you. Maybe we'll, we'll find out her real reasoning later on, maybe in episode eight, but episode six to seven, she don't want you. Episode one through seven. Actually, since she saw you, she doesn't want you, bro. She's not attracted to you. She's very mean to you. She's not appreciative of you. She doesn't want to communicate with you. All she does is cry all the time because to be honest, she's miserable. She does not want you. And I really hope that this doesn't fuck you up. And make you like turn your savage on. Because you are a good man. You really are a good man. Brett and Tiffany I think. So we get to Brett and Tiffany. And oh no. Before then we get to Kwame and Chelsea. So you know Kwame had not introduced Chelsea to his mom. Uh, I believe his mom is still in Africa. So he called her to let her know. Now we didn't hear her speak. I thought that was very interesting. They didn't play her voice. So you know what? I'm going to just play her voice for y'all. You have gotten married. You are on your way to the altar. And you did not. You did not consult your family. Your mother. Your father. And you are now in the States. You go for marrying a white woman. You know, that's just me. I just, I think that that's how his mama speaks. I just, you know, hey. Clap it up for me, baby. Hey, my African impression, I'm getting better. You know, I'm Haitian. I put a little, I I, I know you can hear a little bit of, 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 of cre -cre, the Creole, the, the, the Haitian accent in the African. But his mama was mad as fuck, okay? His mom was mad as fuck. She ain't trying to hear it. She not trying to hear his explanation. She don't want to meet Chelsea. She don't give a fuck. And to be honest, as someone who's Haitian, I can relate to that. Haitians don't play that shit. Do not surprise us with an engagement and bitch, do not surprise us with a fucking wedding. That will literally make family members, including your parents, not talk to you. They feel like they have to be included in every, like they have to be included in the process. They need to know who you're marrying. They need to tell you whether they approve or not before you get engaged. Like they have to have a say so. I don't like her. I don't like him. Is he Asian? Where is his family from? Does she know how to cook? Is he going to eat? Because for my son, you have to eat. He has to eat. If you don't eat, you cannot marry. You know what I'm saying? Haitian moms are very particular, especially when it comes to their sons. Oh, bitch. They will kill you over their motherfucking sons. When it comes to their wife, they be trying to, uh, when it comes to their daughters, they be trying to get rid of their daughters. Like, <laughs> somebody please marry my daughter, please. Like, get, get her the fuck on. But when it comes to their son, oh my God. Because that's their namesake. That's the family name carrying on. So they don't play that. And bitch, if you tell your mom today you're getting married and they don't know that person, that can make them not fucking talk to you. I have a cousin right now who's dealing with that shit. He's, they, they're married now. Actually, are they married? Anyway, they're on their second child together. And my auntie do not fuck with that girl. And she white too. My auntie do not fuck with that girl. She do not fuck with her at all. Like, because it somewhat happened like that. It was kind of like a, oh, I met this girl, we getting married. Uh-uh, bitch. I don't fuck with you. That's how Haitians are. I'm assuming that's how Africans are too. You know, again, we didn't hear her speak. We didn't hear her reasoning. So I'm assuming, based on my experience being part of, you know, the Caribbean diaspora, who is pretty much like the African diaspora. <laughs> um, so we have Brett and Tiffany. Brett and Tiffany, they are in, they are in their living quarters together. Brett, uh, uh, Tiffany is frying some chicken. You know, 
they ain't show us the end result, but my sister is in the kitchen, baby. She in the kitchen. She she getting her Marshall on, baby. She she frying chicken, baby. She frying chicken. She cooking. Um, I don't know what the fuck she had in the oven in that shorts yet, but she almost burned it. I don't know what the fuck was going on. But her and uh, Brett were talking about finances, right? And Tiffany just brought it up like, you know, like, I think you, she calls him bougie Brett, which I think is funny because he is bougie. Like you can tell, especially going into his apartment, everything was so techy, like everything was spick and span. He's bougie and I love that for him. So they were talking about finances and she was saying, you know, do you spend a lot of money? It does seem like you spend a lot of money and I'm just trying to think where would I fit in as your new wife? And he's like, oh everything will be fine you know he's like you know I'm not here to have like he didn't say it in these words but I don't feel like Brett is here for it has to be this way and that way he made it clear to her that he would be okay with paying most of the bills he's here to pay at least 75% of the bills I love that for my sister I love that for my sister now I would prefer for him to say 100% of the bills but I love that for my sister, especially with her. Like, she's coming from living with a roommate. This man lives on his own. You know what I'm saying? And so him being able to take her on and have that responsibility as a husband, I love it for her. Now, let me know what your thoughts are. I would have loved him to say 100%. He said 75 Am I wrong? Do you feel like it should be whatever they see fit? I was on a panel recently for the Dear Wifey podcast and there was one guy who was on the panel and he was saying, oh, you know, women now, women nowadays, they want to rest in their femininity. But to me, like, I, I want to do what's best for the home. And if 50-50 is best for the home, then that's what we need to do. You know, I also want somebody who knows how to submit. And I'm just like, okay, bitch. Submit where? I feel like the percentage of the bills you pay is the percentage of submission you're going to get. I'm sorry. Like, especially if you're looking for 50-50. Because it's been my... Well, actually, it's not, it's not been my experience. I've never lived with a man. But from what, I'm, from what I'm seeing with a lot of my girlfriends, it's really not financially beneficial for them to get married because you dusties are asking for 50-50. And a lot of times, 50-50 turns into 20-80. Where the woman is fitting most... Is, is putting forth... Is... is Basically covering most of the bills. That's the reality of it all. Is that a lot of y'all, y'all be out, y'all be out here hustling, and the hustle is not a traditional job. It's not a job that's bringing in much, and so a lot of the times the woman has to foot most of the bill. That's what I'm seeing around. So that's another reason why I do see a lot of people are not being married, especially like women nowadays, because it's just like like marriage used to be financially beneficial for women. It was a financial benefit for women. Like, it was marrying into money. It was a man seeking someone who he could expand his money with. You know what I mean? Nowadays, that's not what it's, it's not given that. And so, yeah. I don't know. But anyway, Brett, he said he would foot most of the bills. I'm here for it. Now let's get to Bliss and Zach. Bliss and Zach are on this yacht date. And all I could remember was that ugly ass yacht date that... Zach had when he was in Mexico with Shrek and I'm so glad that this yacht date went better for him they have so much chemistry you know they kiss they talk they laugh and you know at the end of it, of it all you know uh, Zach asked Bliss if you could meet anybody in the world who would it be and Bliss says oh Oprah because she's a powerful woman she's influential and she's like who would you want to meet? Well, I, uh, Zach asked Bliss, if you could meet anybody in the world, who would it be? And she says, oh, I would love to meet Oprah. I would love to meet Oprah. I feel like that's such a black girl answer. I want to meet Oprah, the black Oprah. <laughs> I want to meet Oprah. Um, and then she says, well, who would you want to meet? And he said, I would want to meet your parents. He got down on one knee and he asked her to marry him. He proposed to her with tears in his eyes, you know, and I was worried because again, Bliss voiced, you know, her anxiety of being second choice. And, but when she approved and when she said yes, I was happy for them. I'm happy that they're engaged. I, I, Y'all, I'm, I'm really, really rooting for, for Zach and Bliss. Um, I feel like he's put his 
past foot forward. What I like about Zach is this. A lot of men, when they apologize, they just want you to take their apology. I apologize. That should be enough. And it's not enough. It's not enough. You have to put action behind that. And what we're seeing with Zach is someone who's willing to put the effort, who's willing to put in the work. I'm not just going to apologize to you. I'm going to do the work. I'm going to communicate with you. I'm going to show you my intentions. And I really, really like that for her. I really, really like that for her. What do y'all think? Are y'all rooting for them? What do you guys think about everybody? Honestly, I'm going to go into episode eight in the next video because this one is getting so lengthy. But I'm going to say I'm rooting for Zach and Bliss. I'm rooting for Tiffany and Brett. Everybody else can go straight to hell. I, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Jackie needs fucking therapy. Jackie needs therapy. You don't need a husband. You need therapy. Not a husband. You need therapy. Um, I just don't see it for none of these couples. However, it is very entertaining to me. These two episodes were cool. The, you know, there was the meet and greets. It wasn't as entertaining, but there was a lot going on. I can't wait to get into episode eight. I cannot wait to get into episode eight. It's a lot of bullshit that happens in that episode. Anyway, in the meantime, drop down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, I have so many new subscribers. Love you guys. Uh, for you guys that don't know, my name is Jesse Wu. I am a television host, personality, singer, content creator, uh, actress. I'm really, really happy that you guys are here. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Take care.